Is it just me or have Derby County started to slip in the championship this season? Is Paul Warren beginning to feel the pressure? Are we going to find ourselves in a relegation battle? Now, these are all the things which I'm going to answer in this video today. And just 24 hours on from that poor performance versus Swansea City, I think there's a few things which we need to discuss, which need to change for Derby County. But before we do get into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. Hit the like button as well to stay tuned for all the latest content. And make sure you drop a ram in the comments for the sake of engagement. But let's get straight into it. Now, obviously, yesterday, a lot of things went wrong for Derby County. Ultimately, the midfield was non-existent for the first 20 to 25 minutes. Was that because of the players involved in the midfield? Was it Paul Warren's tactics? I think it's a bit debatable either way. Now, obviously, when we talk about Derby County and the things that need to change, a lot of it is going to take time. A lot of it is going to be a season-on-season -season build. And ultimately, I think there's situations which we could improve on right now, which we just haven't so far. And for me, one of those is, don't get me wrong, we weren't great against Preston either and changes were needed. But in my opinion, we took out the exact midfielder that we needed for this type of game in Liam Thompson and brought in a player like Marcus Harness. Now, if you want to treat yourself after such a poor performance, go over and check out Kitbag. There's a ton of Derby County items that have up to 50% off. Use code SCORE at checkout to make sure you get the discount. Go down to the link in the description, look at all the things that you can get, pick yourself up something to make yourself smile this evening. I'll catch you in the next part of this video. And we didn't have a striker on the pitch. And these are all decisions which fall on Paul Warren. Whether uh, he was advised by his coaching staff or not, he has the final say. And for me, a lot of the problems we've had this season do fall on Paul Warren. And I know there's a lot of people that have been part of the Paul Warren out camp for a long, long time. There's a few people joining in and leaving and things like that. And I'm not necessarily one that goes either way on it. I'm really pretty straight down the middle, really, when it comes to Paul Warren. Sometimes I think he's got to do better. Sometimes I think that he's done a really good job. And I think over the course of the last few games, I think he's really struggled. And is he finding his level? Is he getting us back into a relegation fight those are all questions which are going to be answered over the course of the next month really and it's a very difficult month and this is why I think Paul Warren could be in danger because and it could be something which Derby County need to change because as we head towards the January window we look at the fixtures for the next couple of weeks with the likes of Leeds, Burnley, Luton we've got some really really difficult games coming up and we play a lot of games in quick succession and if we can't pick up points, we could easily find ourselves in that drop zone. And I spoke about it a few times earlier this season that five points isn't a lot in the championship. And that's the gap from us to the relegation zone. It's been between three and six points across the course of probably the last seven or eight games. And we never seem to be able to pull away, never seem to be able to pick up good results against those teams around us. And personally, I think we've been found out a little bit. We play the same style, the same way just sometimes with different players and I think that was the situation last night. We tried to play a system that we've played earlier this season but without the players that fit it. We went very attacking, I'm not going to lie. We had four forwards on the pitch in Blackett, Taylor, Harness, um, Mendes Lang, Caden Jackson. We had a very creative midfielder on the pitch in uh, Kenzo Haldmine. Obviously, you can't really argue with the fullbacks because we don't really have much choice. Kane Wilson had to play. Callum Elder and Craig Forsyth toss up really between those two but that's something which I think needs to change it's Paul Ward's decision making and we play that first half and after half an hour less than that we should have made a change we should have bought in a Liam Thompson we should have bought in a Nat Phillips and gone to a back three and tightened up the midfield but we didn't and people say we got back into the game but ultimately I think it was just Swansea City were comfortable got sloppy let us play about with the ball a little bit I don't necessarily think we worked our way back into the game. I think we were allowed back into the game. And we've seen it ourselves with Derby County do that over the years. And another thing which I think needs to change for Derby County is Caden Jackson cannot be playing through the middle. We've seen it a couple of times this season. And ultimately, in my opinion, doesn't fit the role, doesn't suit what we need. And ultimately, it's something which needs to be dealt with as soon as possible. And in my opinion, I cannot understand why Dejon Brown or James Collins didn't start. Because 
we'd have been a better side. We'd have been more comfortable. Now, nothing that Dejon Brown would have done would have stopped the first goal. Nothing that James Collins would have done or Jerry Yates or anything like that would have stopped the first goal. It was completely away from their control in the forward line. But would we have had better opportunities to score? Probably. Would Dejon Brown or James Collins have put away that Caden Jackson chance after the Marcus Harness volley? Probably. And we did it a few years ago with Wayne Rooney. The no striker just vibes department. And for me, it just doesn't work for Derby County. We've done it a few times. doesn't really work. Let's just play a number nine. Let's make sure we have number nines in the building. And it is time to get serious about sorting that out. Now, the next change that Derby County really need to make, and this obviously refers back to the first point, and it comes to the manager, the coaching staff, the recruitment team, whoever's involved in player sales. We need to get players out the door. The likes of Washington, the likes of Barkhazen, the likes of Sonny Bradley. And I'm not saying that they're bad players, they can't contribute. But we need better. We really need better. And I understand we don't have a lot of money in the club right now. We're losing a lot of money. We're hemorrhaging funds. And that is all part of being a football club, unfortunately. That is just the way this world works at the moment. But... We need to be getting on the blower to League One, League Two clubs, getting these players out the door to open up spaces for us to bring in another striker, another winger, another midfielder. We need those opportunities and that all falls, in my opinion, on the manager. The manager has got to be abrupt, he's got to be sharp and he's got to get rid of these players. Ultimately, yes, they may have good working relationships based on what occurred last season and things that have happened over the last year or so, but we can't live on sentiment. We saw that with Corey Smith. We saw it with Louis Sibley. We saw it on the likes of Jason Knight. We saw it on the likes of Max Bird. and We've seen it on all those players who have left us over the course of the last 12 to 18 months that you can't live on sentiment, and Paul Warren knows that. But Will Paul Warren do anything about it in January? Will he have the opportunity to? This is one of the biggest problems we have. I made a video a few days ago talking about Ali Alhamidi from um, Ipswich Town. And ultimately, I think he would be a perfect striker to fit into our number nine role alongside or on his own, Jerry Yates. And I think it would be a perfect option off the bench at times as well. So... These are all things which the manager and recruitment team and the ownership have got to deal with. Will they? Maybe not. But should they? Absolutely. Now, the final big change which I think Derby County need to make is this. And, and a lot of this, across the course of this video I'm noticing while I'm talking, is it's all based on the management, the coaching team. A lot that's got to change is the changes heading into games. We often we don't often go from game to game with the same eleven. Now, injuries understandable, I get it. But we made six changes last night. And ultimately I think you could tell in the first 20, 25 minutes that a lot of those players probably haven't played in those partnerships before or haven't played in that system together before. And it's very difficult to gel and build a system, build a style where everything's constantly changing. I think the midfield is constantly changing. The strike, the, the front three is probably the only thing which often stays the same, but we've obviously, over recent weeks, played Dejon Brown and Jerry Yates up front, and the likes of Mendes Lang and Kane and Jackson have been in different positions, or Blackett Taylor or what have you have been in different positions. Kenzo's been moved about from uh, a number eight, a number ten, a number six across the course of the game, and across the course of recent games as well and it does make it really difficult to be able to build relationships and build foundations now that is obviously what I'm noticing across the course of these games and I'm obviously no expert I don't think I'm Pep Guardiola but I think I have a fairly good understanding of what Derby County need and how we can move forward now the big question is are we allowed and a lot of this falls on ownership when you come to uh, transfers, bringing players in, letting players go. A lot of that does fall on ownership because we're not going to let go of the likes of Connor Washington, Barkays and Sonny Bradley if they're not going to be able to replace them. You're not going to let a Tawanda Chiwa go back to Wolves to bring in another player if we're not going to be allowed to bring in another player. So these are all things which fall on management, ownership and things which have to be sorted. Obviously, the only thing the players can do for me is put in 100%. And do I think they did that last night? 
For 70, 75 minutes, yes. You can't fault effort, but you can fault performance. And that is why people have the opinion that Paul Warren should potentially be sacked from Derby County. Now, do I hold that opinion as of today? No. Could I hold that opinion over the course of the next few weeks? I think there's a, a, a possibility, yes. So if you have not done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on that notification bell to stay tuned for all of my latest Derby County content. I am bringing gaming, gaming content to the channel. It's going to be posted at 10am every morning. So keep your eyes peeled for that if you're interested. We'll have GTA and Football Manager. Um, I posted a couple of videos on a different channel and felt that uh, a lot of the people who probably wanted to see it um, probably didn't know about the other channel. So I'm going to bring it here and do that and just keep it that way. So there's going to be two uploads most days unless there's nothing really Derby County to talk about. So obviously drop a comment for the sake of engagement. Let me know your thoughts on what I've spoke about in this video. There's obviously a lot to go with this situation. So let me know your thoughts. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll catch you in the next video.